a download from Triple J. For more music, current affairs, comedy and culture, triplej.net.au. And now... 2008. In just a moment on Triple J, I'm going to take you back to London where I was a couple of weeks ago and another one of the artists that I spoke to there was the very likeable singer-songwriter Eugene McGuinness. Yeah, I think when people hear it, they say they think I'm older. Well, I think 23 is like, you're still young, but like, if I always think of it in like footballer's terms. God, like, I'm, I'm a couple of months older than Wayne Rooney. It's like, that's a bit weird. OK, the very fresh-faced Eugene McGuinness talking about how people think he's a lot older than he is when they hear his music. Uh, we'll get to more of that conversation in just a moment, but right now, this is the track best known to Triple J listeners of his self-titled debut album. This track from Eugene McGuinness is called Fonz. <laughs> Okay, that is Eugene McGuinness on Triple J on 2008 with Fonz from his self-titled debut. Spoke to Eugene McGuinness a couple of weeks ago in a cafe underneath his rehearsal room where he was getting ready to uh, get his new band all together with their new material to go out on the road. And I found out when I spoke to Eugene that his dad is Irish. His dad is also a painter by profession. And both Eugene and his younger brother Dominic, who is his only other sibling, were both named after French painters, thanks to their father. I asked Eugene about what sort of music he listened to when he was growing up and when music first hit him. Because when you listen to this record, it's got a certain old-fashioned vibe to it in a good way. It reminds me a lot of a, a variety of 60s and 70s seminal acts. And that might have something to do with all the music that Eugene heard in his house when he was growing up. Because it was like the house was, was always, for, like the music was always on in the house. My dad was like mad on the Beatles and uh, Dylan and the Stones and all that stuff and the Kinks uh, and everything. Like he didn't, like he didn't have, the music was never not, not going on. And there's, a, there's always a piano in the house. Dad played a bit of piano and stuff. I don't know, it was weird. Like I'd go to school go to school during the day after like the house would just be or the car whenever we'd be traveling like there'd be music around us and um i didn't think much of it i kind of thought that's the way everybody was and in a way there are a lot of people who are just constantly surrounded by music but like the school we went to like i'd, I'd go into school and i'd be like humming some stupid chuck berry song in my head like during class and people would just be like what what you're always you've always got like you've always got some stupid song in your head and, like, <laughs> and i think it was I think we listen, music was around us a lot more than a lot of other people. It was, it was our furniture. But it wasn't top 40 type stuff. It was, it was different music to the kids at school. It was that as well. But I mean, initially, like, the, like Dad ruled the stereo. And, like, you know. So, like, it kind of started with my dad's record collection. But whenever interesting bands started coming through, like the Strokes and all that New York stuff, that kind of reignited a sort of thing. So it, was, it really started with whenever White Stripes and Strokes and... Yeah, 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 and things like that were coming through. So is that is that where Eugene, you started sort of writing stuff and doing your own stuff around that time? Yeah, it was. I suppose yeah, it was when I started thinking about like um, actually doing music. I was all, already like playing a fair bit, but I never actually thought of like a, like specifically doing it with a with any career in mind. Just, it was just doing it because I enjoyed it. And it was not until actually no, it's not up until very recently where people start talking about record deals and stuff. They actually start thinking about music in a in a professional way, which is completely wrong as well. <laughs> it's the wrong thing to do. So now I'm trying to undo that. <laughs> Nothing professional about it. Yeah. What about songwriting? Did it come easy for you? Uh, it came gradually. I, I always I wrote like songs every day from the age of like 15. <laughs> Didn't really tell anybody because it was just embarrassing. Oh, I've got a little piece of paper full of my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> So when did it all, like, doing all that songwriting, having those notebooks, you know, documenting days and ideas, when did you get discovered? Like, what was the turning point in that turning into something that's roughly a career? Uh, I think um, Domino Publishing, like the publishing, it wasn't the record, though. initially the publishing, they got on, they wanted to get kind of, I don't know, I think they wanted to, like, get involved quite early. Um, How'd they hear about you? MySpace. <laughs> Ah, oh, seriously, so you uploaded some stuff and they just sussed you out? I think, um, they, yeah, I think it was like, it was through something like MySpace or something, they heard something and then they contacted me. And then they said, have you heard of Domino? And I'd just come back from a supermarket and uh, I bought a CD in the supermarket, a new Franz Ferdinand album. And I didn't really know, it, wasn't, it was the second Franz Ferdinand album. 
And I was like, I turned over and like, I get his phone call. He's like, have you heard, from, heard of uh, Domino? I was like, uh, no. I looked at the back of the CD. I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, I just bought this. <laughs> okay, yeah, you owe me 10 quid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably took that as a sign, didn't you? Uh, I suppose so, yeah. But I mean, I didn't really know, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know, know much about it at the time. But then whenever I found out more, I was like, Christ, shit, Arctic Monkeys, all that, you know. It was exciting. Okay, when Domino sort of, you know, linked up with your publishing deal through them and started talking about record contracts and careers and making a record and all that sort of stuff, did they have a like a strong idea of where you might fit into the music scene and what they wanted to do with you? Did they talk to you on those terms? Yeah, well, they kind of they really reassured me because I didn't know much about how all that sort of stuff worked. All I wanted to do was make a record, and they said because now it's very much like what was going on all around me. People, like, even some people that I knew that, you know, people release these records and there's a, there's a high expectation of a big kind of hoo-ha around it, you know, hoo-ha. There's a lot of pressure for the... <laughs> there's a lot of pressure for the first record to be like, you know, big thing. And Domino were saying, oh, we see you more as a career artist, so... Long term. Yeah, so there's no, there's no real pressure for that big, um, I don't know, summer of 69. <laughs> the revolution starts now. <laughs> yeah. There's no real kind of pressure to kind of hammer it home immediately though you know sometimes i feel like i i put that pressure upon myself which i don't need any label to go well you have to be really good because i do that myself Okay, on Triple J. His album is a real delight, and he was good value too. That is Eugene McGuinness, the 23-year-old English singer-songwriter with Atlas, another one of the fine songs of his impressive self-titled debut album, and a conversation I had with the guy a few weeks ago when I was in London. It was very funny to watch the body, body language between him and his younger brother, Dominic, who's four years his junior. There were so many in-jokes flying backwards and forwards between the two of them as they were tearing shreds off their father for all sorts of reasons that I just couldn't comprehend. And Dominic's actually in his band as well, so it must be completely alienating for all the other members of the band to have these two guys just having wisecracks between each other all the time that no one else understands. But that is Eugene McGuinness. Hopefully he'll come to Australia at some stage. He's, he's, uh, it's amazing because his album is just fantastic and Domino is a wonderful label over in the UK, but you just don't hear the stuff on the radio. You don't, Eugene McGuinness barely gets played on UK radio. Gets more airplay at the moment here at Triple J in Australia than he does over there and it's a real pity because his albums are... Uh, it's a real great listen and it's a really impressive debut album too. 2008. The freshest sounds around. Triple J.